guys, it's Sarah and it's that time. It is time to share my top 10 books of 2022. And I had to narrow them down. I definitely did. There were some that were just no brainers. I knew they were going to be in the top 10. And then the other ones I did have to narrow down a bit. And I have kind of more of a top two for sure. And then the rest are just like also favorites, not necessarily in a specific order, but the top two are like one and two no questions asked. And then the other ones just kind of fall below that, but I loved all of them. So these are obviously all five-star books for me, obviously all high recommendations for me. So we are just going to go, I'll do the top two at the end and it's a good stack. You guys, it is a really good stack. Okay. So the first one here is sweep. This is by Jonathan Oxier. This one is a middle grade book that's a fantasy book it was sent to me from our Christmas book exchange from Amanda and I adored this book this is a historical book that is set in Victorian London and we are following a young girl who is a chimney sweep that's her job she does this under her father and you begin the book seeing them go out together and work jobs and do all these things and Eventually she loses her father and you see her cope with that. You see what happens to her, where she has to go in order to survive. You see her continue her job as a chimney sweep. And then you see her coping mechanism for her grief and things that she's going through in the form of a coal monster. You guys, it's so good. <laughs> it is so good. Um, I just completely adored this book. I loved the characters. I loved the explanations of being a chimney sweep and how dangerous that was. It's not something I've ever really thought about, to be honest, but this shows you how dangerous that job is and, you know, just the things that can happen and the accidents that can happen. You just, I never thought about them, but boy, I am now. <laughs> like, I can't believe that children were allowed to do this. And it makes sense when you when you read the book, you understand why children were allowed to do that. But oh, man, this book just it had me it made me cry. I just I adored it. It is so fantastic. And I'm definitely excited to read more of his work for sure. He's an author on my radar that I want to read a lot more from. Um, but this was definitely one of my favorite books of the year. Okay, the next one is Daisy Darker. This is by Alice Feeney. This is a mystery thriller book that is an isolated thriller. So we are following a family that is going to this birthday celebration for their Nana, who is kind of the, you know, the older one of the family still left alive. And she lives on this island that you can get to physically like you can physically walk across a causeway when the tide is out but when the tide is in that causeway is underwater and you cannot so there's a certain time of day every day that you cannot leave this place so the entire family goes they're having a little bit of a reunion for her birthday and they are all planning to stay the night because they know that they're going to be there long enough that they're not going to be able to leave later okay so when the tide is in and no one can leave, someone dies. And you're left for the rest of the night wondering who did this? Why are more people starting to die? What is going on? They're turning on each other. They're asking questions. Secrets are all over the place. And it was fantastic. This book shocked me multiple times. I was gasping. I loved it. I loved every <laughs> every word of this book. And this one got me completely 100% ticket punch on the Alice Feeney train. I am 100% in on her as an author. So loved this one. And the next one is Lessons in Chemistry by Bonnie Garmus. Now I just bought <laughs> the Barnes and Noble exclusive edition here because it's got these beautiful sprayed edges. It has these beautiful end papers that are like the periodic table. And this was also the Barnes and Noble book of the year. And so I took advantage of my employee discount and bought the gorgeous edition. And now I listened to this on audiobook when I read it earlier this year, and then I hadn't purchased it yet, but I knew I wanted it. And then when this came out, I was like, okay, now I'm buying it. <laughs> so I did. And I adored this book. So this is... <sighs> It's, it's historical fiction. It is set in the 50s, late 50s, early 60s. 
So it's still, but yeah, okay, that's fine. It's like my parents were alive in the 50s and 60s. That's when they were born and now it's considered historical, which is just kind of insane to me. But uh, so we are following a woman named Elizabeth and she is a scientist and she's not married. She has no desire to get married or to have kids or, you know, she wants to be a scientist. That is her calling in life. She enjoys it. It's her passion. She loves it. She surrounds her whole life around it. But she's a woman in the 50s and 60s, and her societal expectation is that she gets married and stays home and becomes a homemaker. She wants nothing to do with that. And the men that surround her have a hard time accepting her desire to do that. And just, it's a very, very much a social commentary on that. And it's really funny. The way she handles things, you guys, I was cheering for her so much. I was just like, yes, Elizabeth, (laughs) like she does not mess around with people. She has no time for your nonsense. She does have to put up with it because it's there, but she's just, she will put you in your place like that. And it's fantastic. Um, this had me laughing that her dog is fantastic. I loved him. And just this whole thing was great. And I loved the solution that, her career path ended up taking. I just absolutely loved that. I thought it was really brilliant. And yeah, so huge, huge recommendation. I loved this. Okay, the next one is Part of Your World by Abby Jimenez. This was my first book by this author and will not be my last. I want to read everything that this woman pens. And this is an adult romantic comedy. And we are following two people who have a chance encounter and they live a couple hours apart. So they're not like right next to each other. They don't live in the same town, but they have this encounter. They have a one night stand, um, find a connection and that connection just kind of sticks with them. However, they are living in different cities and they live very different lives. She is an ER surgeon and he is a small town owner of a bed and breakfast. (laughs) So very, very different lives, very different situations. Um, There's also an age gap. She is 10 years older than he is, but they still have this connection and they're trying to figure out how to make that work. And they come up with a solution and it's working for a while. And then of course there's going to be gray areas. There's going to be other things happening and all this kind of stuff. And just (sighs) the humor in here is 100% my humor. It's on point. The side characters in here were fantastic. I loved the best friends of both of these two. Um, And just there were parts that had me laughing so much. There were like, I could not put this down. I read this in two sittings. It's just, and it's not like super short. (laughs) It's, It's a decent sized book, but I could not put it down. And it was fantastic. And I was texting my friends and it was just, I loved it. It was 100% one of the best reading experiences I've had. Okay. So of course this girl got on my list, but it's Colleen Hoover. And I read Verity this year. Ooh, this, mm, um, this might be one of my favorites of hers. I I kind of have like my one favorite, um, but this is up there as well. (laughs) So not very far from the top. And this is more of a mystery I, I would say thrillery. There's a couple little thrilling elements in here from her where she normally writes like romance books. So very, very different, but I dug it. I really did. I hope she writes more like this. So this one is following a woman who is a ghostwriter and she is asked to finish a best selling series by an author who can no longer continue with the series. And so she's asked to kind of continue it you know, wrap it up, all that kind of stuff. So in order for her to do that, she needs to go to this author's house and like look at her research and kind of see what's already been done and decisions that have already been made. She needs to kind of do her own research into what's going on. She also needs to read the books because she hadn't read them yet. So she goes to um, kind of get lost in all this research and figure out, you know, what she's going to do for this job that's been assigned to her. And upon getting to this house and meeting this family, um, lots of things are coming into question. She is wondering what's going on with this family. Is there something going on with this author? Um just things aren't quite adding up for her. And then you kind of go into all that and she gets very involved in these people's lives. And it's fantastic. I finished this book going, what? (laughs) What did I just read? 
which makes for a fantastic reading experience. Okay, this next one was a surprise. It was a surprise for me. I did not think I was going to like this book. I thought I was going to like it. I didn't think I was going to love it. I didn't think it was going to be in my top 10 of the year. I didn't think it was a book that I was going to want to keep on my shelves forever. And that's The Serpent King by Jeff Sentner. I loved this book. I was so invested in these characters. I I just, I, I could not put it down. I cried. I cried, like ugly cried. My husband looked at me and I told him to look away. Don't even look at me right now. I'm having a moment. <laughs> like, and I was not expecting that. I was expecting to read this book and be like, okay, cool. And then like pass it on. No, this is my baby. It's my precious. I love this book so much. So this book follows a group of teenagers. There are three of them. And they all live in this small town and they kind of have very different living situations, all three of them. So you find out what those are. Um, one of them is living in an abusive household. So there is some abuse in here. We are also following one of them who has a very privileged household, if you will. Parents are very successful. She has a lot, um, doesn't really want for anything. Parents are there. Parents are caring. The parents in here were awesome. Um, her parents were awesome. <laughs> and then we follow a boy whose reputation around the town is being the son of the Serpent King, who was, uh, his father was a, what's it called? A pastor who leads with like serpents. Like it's, it's one of those <laughs> type of places. Um, so he doesn't have the greatest reputation. He gets made fun of a lot and all that stuff. His father is also in jail. So, um, there's that. Uh, so you're learning about all of them individually and then also learning about them as their circle of friends and, you know, how they are there for each other and things that go on. And I was just so incredibly invested in them. I just, I cared about them so much and, Again, I cried my eyes out, so loved it. Okay, this next one is Razorblade Tears by S.A. Cosby. Now, this is a very, very, very adult book <laughs> that is very heavy on the graphic violence, very heavy on the language, uh, so, and it's, it's dark. This is a dark book, so go in with caution. Use your discretion, but this one follows two men who are both convicted felons. They have served their time. They are no longer in jail, but they have served their time before. And their connection is that their sons were married. So, um, but both of their sons were killed in what seems like a hate crime. And you're following these men because the the murder investigation into their son's deaths have really started to go cold. The police are not really finding anything and they're kind of just letting it slip. And these guys are like, uh, no, not acceptable. So they team up together to try to figure out who killed their sons, why they're going around town um, using their skills that they both have in getting to get people to talk. Um, and yeah, it was fantastic. Again, Guys, I, I guess the biggest trigger warning in here, I would say, is the violence. There are some very, very heavily descripted violence scenes. <laughs> so, yeah. But I loved it. I loved it so much. And just, it was a heavy book. But if you're ready for a heavy book, it just... It blew me away. The writing was fantastic. It's also set in Richmond, Virginia, which is, you know, like two hours away from me, which is awesome. And he has a local author as well. Like he lives in Virginia. So that was really cool. Um, but I just, man, it's, it's hard to describe because you get to know these two men as well. Um, and there were times where I was just like, my jaw was dropping. There were times where I was laughing. There were times where I was cheering. There were times where I was angry. Like I felt all the emotions with this one. And I just, I'm going to be all in with him as well. I have um, more to read from him and I cannot wait. Like that's going to be a priority, priority because I just, I absolutely loved this book. It was fantastic. 
Okay, next one. Ooh, this one too, you guys. Bath House by PJ Vernon. Oh my goodness. <sighs> this one is another dark one. It's another like, it's very dark, very gritty, very um, holds no punches. Uh, definitely some gruesome scenes as well. Um, and yeah, okay. This one follows a couple, Oliver and Nathan, and they are together. Um, this one is actually set in DC, so local to me as well. <laughs> and okay, so Oliver and Nathan are very different. Nathan is a um, surgeon at Walter Reed, and Oliver is his boyfriend. <laughs> he has had uh, a lot of addiction in his past. So it's something that he definitely struggles with. And, you know, he does not make the best decisions. He knows that about himself. He tends to be reckless and he definitely feels like Nathan keeps him grounded. Okay. So Nathan ends up going out of town for a conference. While he is gone, Oliver decides this would be a good time to go visit a bathhouse which um, if you don't know what a bathhouse is, a bathhouse is an establishment that gentlemen can go to to have anonymous sex with other men. That's what a bathhouse is. So he finds one and he goes. And when he's there, he's attacked and barely makes it out alive. So now he finds himself in this endless loop of lies because there are things that he can't hide by the fact that he was almost killed. <laughs> so, um, but he doesn't want Nathan to know what he did. He's trying to keep that secret. Obviously, he doesn't want to know that he went there intentionally to be unfaithful to him. So he's just wrapped up in lie after lie after lie and like, and it eventually becomes, okay, what is even the truth anymore? And am I really looking for this person who tried to kill me? And it's just all sorts of things are starting to happen to him and he's becoming very paranoid. And it's just, it's almost like him constantly trying to outrun his own truth. It's insane, you guys. And I just, I loved it. I loved it. It just, it blew me away. The writing is so good, so good. And I want more from this author for sure. I do have another one of his on my shelves and I'm hearing there's supposed to be another one coming. Don't have like a whole lot of details about that yet, but if it does, I will be grabbing it. Um, I just, I absolutely adored this book. All right, we're in the top two. We are in the top two. Okay, this one was number one for a long time until I read my number one. <laughs> And then it knocked it off. But it stayed at number two. Stayed at number two. That is Project Tell Mary by Andy Weir. <sighs> My love for this book, you guys, <laughs> is just, uh, it's so good. Okay, adult sci-fi. I listen to this on audiobook and I cannot recommend that enough. There is an element to this book that I don't want to talk about because it will be a spoiler, but there's an element to this book that just the audiobook enhanced it so much and just made me enjoy it so much more. So I'm just going to say that. I still would have loved it. It probably would still be a number two if I hadn't listened to it, if I had read it, but the audiobook seriously just like kicked it up a notch for me big time. This is an adult sci-fi, like I said. So we are following a scientist who ends up, um, when this book opens, he wakes up. He is on a spaceship in space, and he's surrounded by dead bodies, and he has no idea where he is or even what his name is. He has amnesia. What? So <laughs> um, you follow him trying to figure out who he is, where he is, why he's there, what's going on, and how is he going to survive? You guys, it's so good. It's so good. And that's all I'm going to say, because I don't want to go into too much about any of that, but you do find out why he's there and obviously and all that kind of stuff. But <sighs> this book features one of my favorite characters of that I read from the entire year. And again, I can't tell you anything about that, but... I just, I was, I was scared, 
I was nervous. I was laughing because again, Andy Weir and like he just puts in this humor, like these little one zingers that are just so funny. And I, <sighs> there's science in here that went, whew, but I didn't care. It did not hinder my enjoyment one single bit of this book. I don't get all the science. I am not a science or math person. It's fine. Um, whatever they say in here, sure, that makes sense. Why not? Um, I just, I enjoy the story so, so, so much. And yeah, I just, I can't recommend this one enough. Like, and this is so universal and just so approachable to anybody. You don't have to be a diehard science fiction reader to enjoy this. I'm not a diehard science fiction reader, but I just, it's one of the best books I've ever read. I loved it. All right, we've made it to number one. I feel like you guys are going to know what this is because I haven't shut up about it. <laughs> You're going to, it's The Last Housewife by Ashley Winstead. Nothing I have read since I read this has been as good. It just hasn't. And oh my gosh, this book. Okay, um, we're going dark again, guys. Apparently, I am just into the dark stuff. And that's what it is. That's just me. This one follows a woman who is going back to her college hometown because one of her best friends from college has been found dead. Um, it's being passed off as a suicide. However, she's not buying that. She's like, there's no way. <laughs> I know exactly who did this and something's going on and I'm going to try to figure out how we can, how we can get these people. So turns out when she was in college, she and her friend and other people were a part of a sex cult. And she is believing that the leader of that cult that she had escaped from is still alive. And he is like, this is him. This, this has his name all over it. But nobody knew about him. Nobody knew what he did. Nobody knew any of that stuff. So she is like, okay, I'm going to bring this to light and we're going to figure this out. And so you follow her, try to do that. The way that she learned about her friend's death is through a true crime podcast that she listens to. And so she teams up with that podcast host and together they try to do this. Oh my gosh, you guys, this book was wild. It was just, you see her immersing herself back into this thing because it's the only way that she's going to be able to find answers. It's all very hush hush. It's all very exclusive. You have to be vetted. It's like, it's a whole thing. And the whole reasoning behind why it's such a secret is insane. It is insane. And you read this and you're like, oh my gosh, I bet this is happening. <laughs> like, I bet something like this is happening right under our noses. It would not surprise me one bit. It's crazy. And I just, I loved it so much. It's very intense. Again, it's very dark. The characters are very gray, including our main character. There are a lot of content warnings for this one, which the author has put in the front. So um, if you want to pick this one up, I would, I would look into those first <laughs> to see if it's something that like, you know, if you do have some content that you need to stay away from, I would read that first to make sure that you would be okay to go into this one. But oh, man, I devoured this. I could not put it down. I was just, I felt like I was there and it made me very uncomfortable, but I loved it. <laughs> so I don't know what that's saying about me. It's fine. It is one of the best books I've ever read. It really, it really truly is. And um, yeah, I just, I can't recommend it enough if you can read it because I can't recommend it to everybody. Not everyone's going to be able to handle this one. But if you can, whew, man. Okay, those are the top 10 books I read this year. Man, that's a good stack, right? Like, oh gosh. And you get a little bit of everything. We have some young adult. We have a middle grade. We have a sci-fi we have a historical book. We have some romantic comedies. We have some thrillers. We have some dark books. Like, it's a pretty good mix. Pretty proud of that. <laughs> okay, let me know your thoughts. Have you read any of these? Are you planning to pick any of these up 
now. Let me know for sure. And yeah, that was good. It was a good year. And I'm excited to see what 2023 is going to bring as well. Let me down below some of your favorites from the year. And, you know, I would love to see your comments on that. And maybe I could pick some of those up if I have them already. That would be awesome. And I will see you guys again soon. Hope you have a great day. Bye.